Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. Are you guilty of making this very crucial mistake when it comes to navigating between screens in a multi-module Android app? So you can see the little setup that I've prepared here is we have an app module, we have a core navigation module or core presentation, whatever you want to call this. We have a feature A with a presentation module, could of course also contain um, additional layers, but these are not relevant for this video. And we do have a feature B, where we also have um, a screen. We have a feature B, um, which I'll show you in a moment. Feature A contains two screens. And when we launch this app and actually um, check it out, then we will just have our screen A here. We can go to screen B. And from screen B, we can go to feature B. When we click this, we get to our screen C, where we can then go back to feature A. So navigation works perfectly fine, but let's see how I implement this and how many, many other Android developers also implement this. And by the way, if you're actually curious how I managed to really make all these coding concepts stick in my brain, especially these internals about things, then I'm going to reveal my top five learning methods that really help me to learn in two weeks what many other people need 10 for. I will reveal these in a free live online workshop on November 2nd at 3 p.m. UTC time. You can register below for free. It's really only live, will be completely interactive and therefore also not be recorded. So if we first of all take a look here in our nav graph, in our application module, so our uh, nav host actually. So we have a nav host, nav controller, and then we simply add feature A and feature B to our nav host. If we take a look in there, how this looks like, well, then we just have our feature A nav graph builder, which we also put inside of feature A presentation, since these screens belong to feature A after all. So here we define our screen A and screen B, which both belong to the same feature. And inside of screen A, well, we're just going to show a simple button. And when we click this, we navigate to the next screen. Same happens here in screen B. If we hop into that, uh, actually, that's the route. Uh, let me let me go here, screen B. There we go. Um, here we also navigate just to uh, screen C in this case. Screen C consists um, or is part of the um, second feature. So of a different module here. This is where screen C is in. And therefore, we also have this feature B of our second feature um, where we just have a single screen. And then we just connect all these different features here in our nav host in the application module. That's what its purpose is, right? Well, yes, uh, but this is still not implemented correctly. And the more often I review code from people in my mentorship program or so, the more often I see this mistake being done like this. Because if we implement navigation like this in a multi-modular project, this completely defeats the purpose of a multi-modular architecture. Because our way of thinking when we create different modules, so a multi-module architecture like here, we have a feature A presentation, feature B presentation, we have a core module with a navigation package which includes all those classes that are shared between multiple features in the sense of navigation. That architecture itself is completely fine and also what I teach in my Android Essentials course, but we always need to think from a perspective as if we were building a library when we write some kind of code for a module. And what happens now if we take a look here in feature A, for example, screen A, what happens now if you would want to reuse this feature in a different app? A different app might need exactly the same feature. And that is a, a very big advantage of having a multi-module architecture that we can really just take one of our modules and simply import it into another project as if it was a library. But what would this mean with our navigation approach? It would mean that, okay, we definitely also need to reuse this route screen B, which is part of our core navigation uh, modules in here I have to find all of our routes. So far, so good. I mean, that's in the end the purpose of a core module that we can share uh, certain dependencies between features. And that's not the problem here. But if we now take a look in screen B and take a look where this leads us to, that leads us to screen C, which is part of a completely different feature. So what this means is, if we would want to reuse our feature A in a completely different project, then we would hard code inside of that feature that every single navigation on this button click has to lead to our screen C. So that means we would not be able to reuse this feature A without also reusing feature B. But that is completely against the purpose of having isolated feature modules. So that is the, the biggest issue with this approach, that you're just a hard coding where to navigate inside of your feature module which um, makes it not reusable at all. But there is a second issue with this is, and that is that you couple all your feature modules to Compose Navigation in this case. But what happens if in a different project you are using Compose Destination, so a navigation library? What happens if you're using Voyager or something like that? Then you can't use your module anymore in that other project because your feature module hard codes that you're using Compose Navigation for navigation. Because you're simply using the Compose Nav Controller here inside of your feature modules. That also completely defeats the purpose of having a multi-module architecture. So let's think through how we can really improve this and how navigation in a multi-module project should really be. So as I said, we definitely don't want to hard code or encode the navigation logic inside of our feature modules. That is instead the, the real responsibility of our application module. Every app 
has an application module, the little green module here. And the purpose, the responsibility of this application module is to just wire everything together, to have access to all your modules, to have access to all your features and just wire them together so that they make sense for the context of this specific app. And wiring features together obviously already kind of contains the information that this is a lot about navigation because from which feature you can go to which feature is very dependent on the specific app you're working with. So we definitely want to avoid passing down the nav controller to feature modules. Modules. Let's remove this and therefore also remove this here and rather provide lambdas so we can decide on our own in the application module where we want to navigate or if we want to navigate at all when we click on, on the specific button. So here we just provide an on button click lambda for example. Of course, uh, depending on your use case, you might want to be a bit more descriptive, especially if you have more buttons on this feature. But then we simply pass this lambda here and suddenly we, we completely decoupled our feature from using Compose Navigation and we also decoupled it from a hard coding that we always want to go to screen C when we click this button. So if we do the same now for screen A, also get rid of the nav controller, provide an on button click lambda, on button click, and same thing for screen B, uh, actually uh, screen C it seems to be, screen C, screen C, there we go, get rid of the nav controller and just provide a lambda that triggers when we click our button right here. And then we also want to get rid of these, um, yeah, the, these kind of feature graphs, which I see quite commonly, because even though we don't need the nav controller anymore here, and we could implement the navigation within a feature, which is usually less error prone and uh, usually doesn't change if you reuse this feature, but we would still couple this feature to Compose Navigation since we again use the nav controller and nav graph builder here. So I want to uh, find and locate this class or this function completely delete it. We are not going to need this. Same for feature B. And then we can hop here into our main activity, which is inside of our application module. So this is now the place that is intended to wire everything together. Here we do have our nav controller, but this should really be the only place, um, the, the only um, module that has access to the nav controller in a multi-module project. So in here, we simply define our screens. We have our screen A on the one hand. We say, okay, screen A. And when we now click on our button here, we can safely perform the navigation since that way um, this, this navigation transition is not hard-coded and included in the um, feature A anymore. You can say nav controller, navigate. In this case, we'll go to screen B. So our route can then copy paste this two more times. Here we have screen B, screen B, import this. There we go. And lastly for screen C from our other feature, um, which we also have access to here because the app module is allowed to have access to all features. So we make this a screen C finally. And here we can then um, actually also change this one to screen C. So we go to screen C from screen B. Uh, and lastly here, we want to go back to screen A. Here we can then also have our pop up to, where we say we want to pop everything up to our screen C and say inclusive is true. So we just go back to the very first screen. So in regards to functionality, this is now equivalent. We can launch this. If I hopefully uh, didn't forget to add some kind of um, thing. Oh, we have an invalid import here. Let's get rid of that. Relaunch this. There we go. Here's our app. And we can still perfectly navigate. So functionality-wise, everything is the same. But now we can suddenly com completely reuse feature A because it really just exposes composables and it's completely up to uh, the project that uses these composables, that uses this module what it wants to do with these, where it wants to show these, and what it wants to actually uh, do when the button is clicked. So this approach is now a lot, a lot more flexible. What you should also do is you should then um, definitely move your routes here from the navigation module instead of your application module. Oops, copied it again, uh, instead of here, because no other feature in your app should uh, require to know which routes there are in your app because single modules should always be isolated. They should not know what kind of app they are actually put into. So if you have an authentication feature with a login screen, a registration screen, a forget password screen, this feature should not know in which kind of app it is used, whether that's a calendar app, whether that is a social media app or so. It should just really declare what is required for a single authentication feature. And what this now really means in the, in the whole scope of your app, that should then be defined in the application module. Something that I also typically like to do is um, to work with navigation graphs. So one graph per feature. Um, so we would bundle these two screens here in one navigation graph and this one in another, because this really uh, easily allows us to pop a whole feature from our back stack when we, for example, navigate somewhere 
folder and we don't want to have that previous feature on the back stack anymore. But that is completely independent of a multi-module architecture and that is something I would always do. But I think that shows how vulnerable a multi-module architecture actually is to making mistakes. If you do everything right, it's great and it can really speed up your Gradle builds, uh, but most people don't really understand it. I mean, I, I deep dive into all this in my Android Essentials course, but given the fact that this course is uh, 23 hours long, already shows how complex a multi-module architecture can be. So my recommendation is always stick to a single module architecture until you're really confident with a multi-module architecture, at least when it comes to really applying this type of architecture in a production project. So thanks for watching. As I said down below, you'll also find the link for the workshop registration. It takes just a minute, so go for it and then your spot is safe. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.